With Hamas' attack on Israel, the world is facing the risk that we will see a third global shock within four years. So far, the conflict is concentrated in the region and we have seen not only, but we have seen so far only victims and human suffering there. Hence, the implications on the global economy so far are limited. And we have not changed our base scenario for the time being. We still expect that we go through a period of anemic global growth with inflation coming down in a moderate way in the next couple of quarters and central banks keeping interest rates at current plateaus, particularly in the case of the Fed and the ECB. So far, we have seen nevertheless some implications from the conflict in terms of higher risk premia on the oil market. These are likely to stay. And we have also seen that the view of investors regarding government debt has changed. And therefore, we have increased somewhat our forecast for government bond yields within a 12-month period. So this is somewhat higher than we thought before. But we still expect, compared to current elevated rates, that long-term yields are coming down. Now turning to the risk. If the war is widening in the region, or if the Strait of Hormuz is closed, we probably will see a significant increase in oil prices. And not just because of the proximity to the region, but also because of the dependency on oil from the region, Europe, apart from the Middle East, will be suffering most in such a scenario. Such a shock would come to the global economy in an environment where we still have the knock-on effects from the corona pandemic and the war, the still ongoing war in the Ukraine, and we are still seeing the impact of the increase in interest rates, which is just unfolding, looking, for example, at the commercial real estate market. And the world is going through a transition regarding the four Ds, digitalization, decarbonization, deglobalization, and demographic change. So the world is facing such a shock in a very unfavorable situation. And on top of this, that's in contrast to that what we have seen in the pandemic or through the Ukraine war, the measures from central banks and fiscal politicians could only be limited. Fiscal politicians now face the question of debt sustainability. So the room for maneuver is much smaller than it used to be. On the other hand, central bankers have to care about inflation and therefore their room to ease monetary policy is much lower than it used to be. In that respect, if the war is extending and if the oil price goes through the roof, the implications on the global economy and on financial markets will be much more severe than many models suggest. Thank you.